My first memory of uh, Santa Monica Pier was before I actually worked here. I wasn't originally from Southern California, so when I came down here, I heard about the pier and the beach, and I uh, decided to go down to the pier and check it out. And the day that I came down, they were uh, filming Ruthless People and Danny DeVito. Oh my God, that's right? a great I didn't movie. know it at the time, yeah. but just see, you know, the parking lot full of cars and movie stuff. You're like, this is Hollywood. Yeah, totally. And I, I, you know, I didn't have a lot of experience with it, so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go out to the pier. And as I was heading out to the end, I could see the temporary harbor office at the time. And the pier was much different because that was back when it had gotten destroyed. And so, yeah. you know, a big chunk of it was still missing, so it was shorter. Uh, and it was when I came out, they were doing some stuff where they were having a vehicle go off the pier. Oh, people wow. jump in the water. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, oh, yeah. but it's like yeah. a chaotic movie. And the, the thing ends where people in the ocean and water and a car and so uh, that was my first experience and I remember kind of seeing the off the harbor office at the time and I didn't think much about it and probably about three years later I ended up being employed and working out of that office so that know. so that day you didn't like think okay well, I could see myself working here no well I mean I remember seeing the guys in there and it caught my eye because they would put up like the tides and the temperature and I was like ah who are these guys and just caught my eye because of the way it was set up and I see these guys cruising around, but I didn't think twice about it. I was actually more focused on just trying to get any job at the time. I was like 19, 18 years old, and so yeah. I was just looking for anything, but that it was seemed out of reach at the time, you know. And look at you now, 40 years later. Yeah, when I was 21, I got a gig there. Wow. So, yeah, that's, that's my awesome. first, uh, you know. So, so my probably first memory of the pier is actually not such a great one. So I, I did grow up here in Southern California, like uh, in and around Santa Monica. And um, as you can remember, 4th of July is here in Santa Monica. Yeah. We're just crazy. Yeah. It was like, we had fireworks show here in the city um, and there was just thousands and thousands of people that would come and visit us. Uh, our beaches, the pier area. So it was just totally chaotic, right? So I was a young kid, it was early 80s. Ah, okay. And I was here, uh, with some friends. They were like actually neighbors. So I wasn't here with my family. It was my sister and I, which is some friends, uh, they were neighbors of ours. And we were trying, we were literally going through the beach, kind of dodging fireworks as they were being lit and thrown, you yeah. know, all around us. <laughs> and then we make it onto the pier and the pier was just overwhelming. It was just, there were so many people and there was a lot going on. And just kind of walking through and I felt like I was going to get lost. And so just trying to keep up with my, our friends was just a difficult task. And, um, and then we end up in the 1550 law, which is the parking lot just north of. Yeah. And it was, again, totally packed. And I witnessed a driver run over somebody. Oh, man. And that's been on my mind. I mean, it was something that was on my mind for many, many years, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. You just can't get that's, it out of your yeah, head. Yeah, I couldn't get it out of my head for yeah. so long. How old were you? Uh, I was probably eight, nine, wow. you know, around there. Yeah. And you know, and here I am it's a later. Lot to see that. At that now age. involved in public safety yeah. and making sure that our pier and the surrounding area yeah. is a little more safe. Yeah. Now you're the guardian, you know, the administrator of the city. We so. are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So as captain uh, now of operations, uh, it's been nine months and, and it's been, you know, so far great. Uh, I'm truly enjoying it. And so, you know, as you know, I oversee all of uh, the operations, the day-to-day, 24-7 um, work that goes on amongst uniformed personnel uh, throughout the city. And so, and that includes all the patrol, our, uh, our CSOs, our PSOs, um, our downtown team, and also uh, our harbor unit. So, uh, very fortunate to be amongst a great group of, of men and women who uh, do some phenomenal work every single day to keep our city, our beaches, and our, and our peers safe. And so, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure um, working with you and, and the team. Uh, because I think you guys are amazing. I think uh, our harbor team are just a solid group of individuals who just do so much here on the pier. And uh, 
and, and, it, and it's, uh, it means a lot to be part of the team. So I'm yeah. really enjoying it. Well, thank you. Uh, I definitely appreciate the compliment. And I know my crew would uh, definitely appreciate those kind words. Uh, and to back at you, I mean, I know it's been a tough challenge and, uh, you know, personnel shortage, the whole deal. And uh, you guys have been doing a great job keeping everybody uh, even keeled and keeping things going and running the way it should be. My role out here for, you know, the Harbor Unit, uh, we're 24 hour civilian unit with the police department, right? So our primary function is ocean lifeguarding, EMS, you know, scuba diving, boat operation, uh, and also being a police presence for the police department as a civilian unit on the pier 24 seven. So we're covering the pier, the water, the beaches area, and just doing our part and trying to, um, you know, help out where we can with the responsibilities that we do, you know. Uh, and it's like anything, it's, it can be a challenge at times with people coming and going. And uh, I, you know, I've been supervisor, I got promoted in 2018, but I've been employed here since 1988. So I got, so March be like 36 years. Uh, I got some of the scars to prove it, right? <laughs> the gray hair, you know, dementia, it's all coming on. I got to get out while I'm still healthy. Yeah. Uh, but I'm lucky, it's a great environment, and you know, one of the best things about working here is certainly is this environment and the, yeah. his the history of this place. I mean, it's over 100 years old, and it's amazing just that whole tenure of going through that time. And also working for, you know, our department, for you guys, working under your command. It's like the flexibility and, and the confidence you guys put in us uh, empowers our unit and our guys, you know, and that's why people stick around and yeah. make it a career, you know. So I mean, well, you guys do everything. Like you literally do everything. Yeah, there's yeah. so many things that you guys do. And then look at your office. Yeah. Look, look around. Look at your office. Yeah. And then on the pier here, world known. You know, everyone comes to the Los Angeles yeah. area, yeah. to Hollywood, to Santa Monica, to the West Side because of this pier here. Yeah, and it's and amazing so. because if you go back, you rewind the clock to the 30s. Uh, this place was probably the same. It was the central hub for Southern California. I mean, you see pictures, the beaches are just smashed with people. It was crowded, and then you just have that ebb and flow, you know? Yeah. World War II hits, and yeah. things change, things happen. The, you know, Venice Pier used to be the thing in yeah. the 40s, and that yeah. disappeared, and then you kind of have this ebb and flow, and now look at the pier itself. I mean, it's like the main draw in Southern California, one of them. Yeah. And, and you're like one of the celebrities here. Yeah. Everyone wants to take a picture with you, right? <laughs> Uniform personnel. That's true. It's true. <laughs> I mean, more photographs across the globe than anywhere. <laughs> more than my house. So. Yeah. I mentioned to you um, the experience I had when I was a little boy. I was yep. under 10 years old back in the early, early 80s. And then working, you know, growing up here in the city and then now working for the department and kind of knowing the history of, of the pier. And, and, uh, and there was a time where it was uh, very busy, uh, late, late night, early, early, early mornings. And we've had uh, incidents and so, but uh, a lot has changed since, right? Wouldn't yeah, you agree? Absolutely. absolutely. I think it's a lot, a lot safer now. Um, you know, I think overall, um, law enforcement, the police department with, with you, with our officers, the community here, I think we've, we've been doing a fairly great job, you know, trying to keep, keep our city sa uh, very safe and our peer as well. And so, um, you know, from hiring officers uh, to walk up and down the pier, especially during the most busiest times, which is the weekends, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, having our beach patrol on and around the piers, um, having the harbor team here as our eyes and ears. Uh, and then there's a lot of things that you guys work on and you guys pretty much handle um, as far as the security aspect of yeah. the pier as well. Yeah. But one of the things that I think is great um, about our relationship with the community, I would say is uh, all the training that we do here. You know, some of the training, uh, we just recently had a very large scale training yeah. operation that basically um, we utilized the entire pier. We shut it. We shut it all down. We had a lot of volunteers who came out, 
and, and role played for us yeah. as we acted out uh, a scenario that was probably very, very difficult. Well, it would be very difficult to handle if it really happened, but you know, you, you try to make it as realistic as possible. Yeah. And so I think, uh, so you were here and I think yeah. that training worked out yeah. extremely well. And I think, you know, our, our personnel and uh, along with, with the fire department and, and the, the community folks here on pier, on the pier did a phenomenal job at, yeah. at, uh, at addressing those issues yeah, no, during that training day. It was a great turnout. I think just getting people that information I mean, it's not set in one way, but it's getting them to think in those terms that, hey, if things like this do happen, it gives people options to respond in the right way, you know, which is if you didn't have that training, they, you know, people might panic and not do the right thing. Um, yeah, those are great things. And for, at least from the harbor side of things, I mean, I can tell you, because I've been working here since 1988, and so the pier is definitely a more safer place now than when it was back then that's kind of what you were talking about in the 80s and it's that ebb and flow i mean it's just kind of with times in general you know uh but now especially with pacific park here brings a very family vibe so it brings kind of a different clientele and plus these guys here with their security has helped watching and patrol on the pier yes. in conjunction yeah. with us doing our nightly patrols and hitting the beast and just being that presence. And I think too, like with what you guys are doing on social media and kind of some of our stuff in Pacific Park, yep. it gets the word out to yeah. people and it can people can communicate kind of better if they see things, if things are going on, uh, if things are kind of, you know, some things are picking up where they shouldn't be and you can direct officers to, you know, the parking lot of people are doing burnouts in their cars yeah. or something yeah. like that, you know, so. Yeah, and you know, I think we do a good job at also trying to f see what the what what some, what are some of the issues, and then you know, coming up with solutions to address them. Um, closing the pier, you know, yeah. uh, late at night. Maybe closing the parking lots uh, from time to time. You know, when, when, yeah. there's a, when there's a lot of activity going on there. So, you know, like you said, I think the relationship um, with the pier leases and obviously the Pacific Park is is very important. And, and working together with like their security team to make sure our our uh, our city and our pier is safe is uh, is important. I mean, this is a family friendly destination. Yeah. I still live in the in the neighborhood. Right. I have four children, and I bring them to this pier and to our beaches, and so that's yeah. why it's important for me as well. No, absolutely, and I bring my family here too. And I mean, I've been working here so long that this is really my backyard, and it's like my house. Yeah. And my garage is at the end of the pier, so. I'm like, hey, did you clean the garage today? <laughs> yeah. That's to my, my guys that I work yeah. with, right? So, I mean, keep the house clean and stuff. Yeah. So, And the world's biggest swimming pool. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, just jump right off. So. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, and, and from our side, from since you, we are Ocean Lifeguards and the EMS side of it uh, and the scuba diving, a lot of our kind of monthly day-to-day -day training is to kind of keep guys getting in the water, keep guys diving every month, doing their EMS skills with Santa Monica Fire and stuff like that, because those are all perishable skills, and especially if you're you're getting in the ocean at any time, and even with, with you know, dive equipment and stuff like that, uh, you gotta train all the time, and so that's another, you know, function of a job that uh, you gotta do all the time, you know, otherwise you, you know, it's a perishable skill, and you, yeah. you know, becomes unsafe if you don't do it, so. You know, and, and the the public doesn't know this, but you guys save lives almost weekly. Yeah. I mean, you really do. Yeah. All the all the times that you have to jump in after somebody. Yeah. It's yeah, it's definitely impressive. part of the job. I mean, it's you know part of the life cycle up here. Yeah. You know? That's the reason why you're in still in great shape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's all fake. It's uh, <laughs> I'm held up by you know toothpicks and stuff. So. <laughs> Heal the Bay has a, a yearly thing where they do heal the bay to clean up the beach. Sorry, yeah. um, where they also actually do put divers in the water and they'll do uh, they'll you know put divers out, clean up the ocean, yeah. and they'll do that up and down the coast. Uh, and same with cleaning up the beaches. Yeah. So um, you know, I mean, I don't think there's a ton of programs to come on the pier and do that type of thing. But I mean, it's certainly yeah. something that the city can always 
promote well, maybe in the absolutely. future. Absolutely, you know? but I think it's also something that we can all do, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be something like this uh, planned. And so, for example, like I do know um, many of the children in the neighborhood and in the surrounding schools. You know, they come they come out to the beach from time to time, and my kids have done it to to help clean our our beaches. Yeah. You know. Which is very important. Yeah. You, know, you guys got the PAL program, yeah. right? So, I mean, that's a big. PAL is an amazing after school yeah. program um, for probably some of our most vulnerable youth here yeah. in the community. And so, it's, it's a free program, completely free uh, for our children. And there's just so many different programs within PAL. Uh, and and uh, the youth there do come out to the beach from time to time. In yeah. fact, they've even learned how to surf. Yeah, program, which is great. Uh, yeah, back in the days, there's a few sergeants that uh, who were who were very involved in PAL that would actually bring the kids out, and we would get them on the boat. They never even been on a boat. They never been on the ocean, and so that's always something in the future that if you coordinate, we could even get the LA County lifeguards to get more boats. You yeah. know, you can get you know plenty of kids out there uh, yeah. playing event. The other thing also that, that we do a lot that I mean is part of the the department's program is the, the uh, Citizen Academy thing, right? Yep. So you get in the community involved. You're, I mean, you can speak better to that, but you guys are teaching them all about the law enforcement side and how, you know, uh, in-depth it is and how hard it can be and, and unsafe and whatnot. And then we'll end up taking a lot of those academy members out for a boat ride. Yep. They get the photo op, and they can see the pier from the opposite side, which is the ocean side, which... Yeah. Not many people that even live here get out yeah. on the water, you know, so. Uh, that program, the Citizens Academy, is probably one of the best programs that we have here uh, within our department. Yeah. Uh, the community gets to learn about what we do, how we do it, and then also why we do it. It's, it's great. I mean, we've built these great relationships with the community yeah. members when they've gone through this program. And, you know, it's about yeah. 10 or 11 weeks and so um, it's hard because we only run two classes per year. We'd love to run more, but it's, you know, it, it does take a lot of time. I would say that one of the biggest things is, you know, I think the, the public now understands that we can't do it alone, yeah. right? You know, um, we unfortunately are not everywhere. And so utilizing the community as our, as our extra eyes and ears and so sometimes uh, individuals are just walking here on the pier and they see something that just looks a little strange but they don't want to bother us or they don't want to call for whatever reason and sometimes you know there's a crime that's about to occur or it's occurring right in front of them so I think the biggest thing is for them to be our eyes and ears and then if they see something that's suspicious it, to call us yeah. to say something yeah. right um, I think that's that's super important and then, and then also you know anytime there's opportunities um, for us to put on these large-scale training events, you know, coming out and volunteering yeah. is, is, also, is also huge. And yeah, so absolutely. the great thing is that we have our community affairs unit and our community affairs unit are like are the liaisons, our neighborhood resource officers and our crime prevention coordinators are liaisons between the community and us. Yeah. And so those, that's, that's probably the yeah. best time that they can probably um, help and volunteer. Uh, yeah. They've been doing issues. this as an academy for, I mean, I think it's been over 20 years now, oh, yeah. right? For so, sure. I mean, you've had tons of people go through them. You've had city council people, mayors go through them. Yep. I mean, we've had them all on our boat. Yep. Half the time, I don't even know who they are. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. hi. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. it's a great program. Yep. So I, I think I touched on it before, uh, come this March, it'll be 36 years, right? It started part-time and then by 1990 got hired full-time and, um, you know, the cool thing, just kind of thinking about it, uh, some of the guys that I used to work with, so they were part of that generation when the actual pier had a yacht harbor, so it had wow. boats and it was really more of a Talk traditional yacht harbor type thing. So. Those guys had all those skill sets where they're, you know, building buoys and anchors and 
scuba diving and working on boats and things like that. And I was totally green, you know, plus they come from that more nautical, cantankerous side, right? So the, <laughs> you know, the relationship was a little yeah. more of a, you know, a father son, you know, yeah. where yeah. never quite living up to the potential I should be, you know? Yeah. Uh, but those guys were great and they became lifelong friends. Uh, and our, you know, the Harp Patrol itself, when I started, you know, was kind of in that flux. It was, it used to have that history and now it didn't really have the boats anymore. So now what was going to be the harbor's identity? What were we going to do? Where were we going? And then ultimately that's when the police department took over the unit because it was in a different unit in the city, like about 1989. So by 1990, the police department took it over and said, hey, I know these guys are rock stars. We're going to point them in the right direction, right? Yeah. And then that's when we started kind of morphing more towards a first responder, Public you know, safety. lifeguarding, you know, rescue boat ops, EMS type unit that is kind of how most first responders up and down the coast have become now. Yeah. You know, if you're not strictly law enforcement, then you're helping the community, uh, serving that that function. You yeah. know what I mean? So. For me, um, you know, I mean, I never set out to stay 36 years, but uh, it's such a great environment. I think I touched on before. I mean, the history here, the, just this environment itself, you know, I take pictures sometimes like at work and I'll, I'll send it to my friends and they're, they, they're very upset about <laughs> yeah. my office view that yeah. I have. Yeah. And immediately it's nothing but, you know, yeah. you know, positive but negative responses because you know they're jealous right so of course um, so that you know having this environment here being able to get in the ocean the history with it and working for such a great department uh, I mean I've gone through at least five different six police chiefs probably you know and yeah. uh, they've all been great and the current one is the best you know yeah. love him <laughs> yeah. uh, he's been nothing but great for us for me he's you know um, so I can't complain at all and it's you know, every year you think you, you know, I'm at that stage where I could go anytime. So, yeah. you know, if I disappoint you and you yeah. yell at me, I'm like out the other way, right? Yeah. But it's... But how are you, you going to leave this? I know. Right? Yeah. And I get to go in the water and, it, you know, you get in the ocean, something about getting in the water, coming back out, it kind of keeps you young, you know? Yep. Sure so does. I've been lucky. Cold plunging. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. And the water temp keeps you, you know, yeah. neutral that way. Yeah. So I've been lucky in that sense, you know, to, to you know keep my physicality, my mental, everything enough to where I can still do the job, hopefully, you know, and uh, that's kind of how I've lasted. Well, the team is very song. lucky to have you as their leader, you know, and, and having that historical perspective of, of who, who we were, you know, way back when is, yeah. is very important. And like you said, I mean, this, I mean, this place is a beautiful place to work. It's a great department uh, as well. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah we're, we're both very fortunate. And so... But, you know, the one thing I would add is that, um, you know, everyone has bad days, you know, and sometimes uh, the work's not easy. But every time, I, you know, I had a bad day or something wasn't going right, I would just drive west. I'd either post up on the park up there or drive here on the pier or go on top of one of the parking lots and just look, look over to the water and be like, yeah. I'm okay. These yeah. are going to be all right. Yeah. yeah. Could be worse. It could be worse. Yeah. I mean, this is amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you've had a long tenure, too. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's been. You've been here for like 100 years, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, 32. Yeah. 32. No yeah. gray hair. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. There's a few here. I don't know yeah. how you do yeah. it. Yeah. There's a few. Yeah. <laughs> um, like you said, it's, it's just that work-life balance. It's super yeah. important. So, yeah. Started here as a cadet yeah. uh, with the police department. Yeah. Uh, was a communications operator and then became an officer in 1998 and been here ever since. Yeah. It's been great, yeah. like you said. Great environment, great police department. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember you, because yeah. I'm older than you, yeah. even though you're my boss now, right? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, But I remember you when you yeah. were promoting in, and I, you definitely, you're one of those guys, and there's been plenty of these guys where I could always kind of like go, yeah, that guy's good, he knows what he's doing, he's solid. And the thing that I always admired about you, and there's been others too, that your personality has never changed. You know, a lot of guys, you know, the job can change them, obviously, yeah, right? 
and you're one of those guys that's always kind of stayed the same, even keeled, your personality never, it was never too low, never too high, and you're always in the middle, and your personality always stayed the same, and you've always got a smile on your face, and you're always up for helping people and doing the right thing. I mean, and that's, you know, and that's why you are where you are, and that's kind of my compliment to you is that, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I wish more people, myself, could be like that and see that, even my son, if I can give him that blueprint, I would be like, hey, study this guy <laughs> and follow it, and you'll be successful in probably whatever you want to do, you know, so. Well, thank you. But yeah. I, I could say the same about you, seriously. I, I really well, can't hey, say <laughs> I appreciate that, thank you. I'll start with, it was the boathouse. Okay, oh. back in the day, yes. it's no longer there, it's yeah, bubblegum right. shrimps. Right, so the boathouse used yes, to be where bubblegum right. shrimp was. I worked there, actually, two years. <laughs> Bartending. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was lucky to get hired there, but that place was a great place. It was the best place on the pier. Everybody went there, great music acts. It was there for 30 years. You got pictures going back to the late 60s where the water is coming up right to the bottom of it. Awesome. Ultimately, you know, it expanded and then, you know, just with times, it just couldn't like keep up. The owner was uh, Ben Desimone from Boston. He was like this kind of quasi, you know, I wouldn't say mafia guy, but he had that very oh, wow. East Coast guy. Yeah. And uh, he would come out for, you know, like for a couple weeks, every three months. He'd just show up and he ruled the roost, you know. He had San Mark PD on speed dial. Right? Really? Everybody knew him. You so, know? But he was living in Boston. Well, he's living in Boston full time. Yeah, come, uh, yeah, and he used to wow. live in the Twin Towers. So he'd come it's, out, he had a place, yeah. hang out, oversee his little, uh, you know, kingdom, and then he would take off. And he's a great guy, you know. Uh, that was probably one of my favorite places, even though I was biased because I worked there. But even afterwards, yeah. you know, family, friends, you'd always meet up there. Um, you know, that and Shay J's, so that'd Shay be my two places. A lot of history there yeah. as well. A bunch of actors have gone through there. Yeah. Yeah, way yeah. back when. Well, we have a guy who used to work for yes. the Harbor Department, right? So, Patrick Har Cunningham. Harbor 3. Like, you know, he's cut from a different cloth. He's like John yeah. Wayne. Yes. Earl Flynn. Yeah. You know. He used to wear, his car wear scarves on his day off all the yeah, time. Yeah, wearing an ascot, yeah. right? He's yes. like Ernest Hemingway. He was all those things woven. And he was, uh, he went to Spain and did bull fighting and there's a picture of him up in Shade Day still to this day from the 50s when he was wow. in Spain. Super impressive guy, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And he was working here well into his what, 60s? Yeah, he was definitely into his late 60s. Late 60s he was old yeah, school, so. he didn't even, I don't think he even started until he's 50 by your age right now. Yeah. And he always wow. worked nights. Yep, he so. worked nights, yeah. And his, you know, his thing was crosswords. He's very well educated, you know, and he, he mentally trained you right, you know. Yeah, he was a great guy. I do remember him. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was well respected. Yeah. He knew a lot of people. So how were your margaritas? Uh, my margaritas? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm, I'm a master at making them now, so, <laughs> yeah, you know, nice. I'd love to be able to serve you one now. Absolutely, so. yeah. You know, I would say, for me, my favorite place here in the city is honestly, like, it, it would have to be anywhere where there's this view. You know, I, I really, really, truly enjoy this view. I mean, we have so many amazing places here yeah. in San Juan. Like my, yeah. my wife and I, we're, we're foodies, and so we, we visit a lot of restaurants here, here in Santa Monica. And we have a lot of really good ones. Um, but, I, but I do enjoy um, the view, especially when um, I bring in family and friends from out of town. Yeah. Like, they have to see it. And so, you know, one of the places, besides obviously being here on the pier or being on the beach is right up uh, well, at- This on, view right this here. This view right here, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Is um, I take them all up on up uh, to the penthouse, up in the Huntley. Oh yeah, So I was thinking yeah. about it when you were saying yeah. it. So, you know, that place, that you know, that's changed a few times, right? Yeah. That's how, that was, yeah. I, I, I don't remember the name of the restaurant in the 80s, but it was, it was another restaurant in the 80s, but anyways, but sitting up there, enjoying a great meal, yeah. Looking over and seeing this is the best. Yeah. And and I always uh, tend to take yeah, yeah. Any visitor that comes in into yeah. SoCal area, I, 
we always visit that spot. Yeah, so, so. it definitely used to be one of my areas to go. My, and when my dad used to come down and visit all the time, Shades was the one for him. Yeah, and he liked that little kind of small vibe. Yeah, the cool. cargo and like that yeah. was his thing. I, I mean, the galley's amazing place. The galley's another. You great know, it's spot. got that history. Yeah, a lot of history. It's kind of nautical yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Third Street's changed a lot, so. Yeah. You know, things come and come and go with that. Yeah. I used to live in the Twin Towers over there. Ooh, so not a bad that, place to live. Not bad. I had yeah. an ocean view from like, you know, a 30 hey, degree angle. Rent control, you should have kept it. I know. <laughs> I, I'm not smart enough. Man, yeah. that would have been great. 